Entrance hymn is number 483, number 483, When I Look at the Heavens, verses 1 and 2. When I look at the heavens, the moon and stars, I shout your name, I praise your name, O God. When I look at the oceans, the peace of the sea, I shout your name. Beloved, let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, beloved. Good morning, Father. As we gather once again as God's family, let us continue to thank him for the many ways he shows his love in our lives. Let us now ask him to help us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries as we place before him all our sins and ask for his pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response to the psalm is, If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, when your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man 
is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alle, alle, alleluia, alle, alle, alleluia, oh, alle, alle, alleluia, alle, 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 alleluia, oh, alle, 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 alleluia. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Alle, alle, alleluia, alle, alle, alleluia, oh, alle, alle, alleluia. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. Beloved, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, beloved, we are known in Jamaica for many things. Reggae, Bob Marley, Usain Bolt, the beautiful mountains and seas and rivers. Sad to say, this morning's front page of one of our newspapers puts us in another realm, on another track, in a different dimension. It reports the following, that with the amount of murders committed last year, Jamaica now has the highest homicide rate of 46.5% per 100,000 people. That is not an award I would like us to have or hold. In fact, it goes even further because of the amount of murders in our country, we have now beat Venezuela. We are ahead of Honduras, even Trinidad and Tobago and Mexico. All of these are mentioned, but we are at the top. Beloved, how do we confront evil in our world? How do we choose to see that all life is sacred from the womb to the tomb? How do we then, as a people of faith, make sense of what is happening in our country, in our region, and in our world? I believe today's gospel 
gives us some insights as to the problem of evil and how we are called as a people of faith to keep walking with confidence in our God. Three quick things where evil is concerned and how we can address it from a, pe from a position and a people of faith. The first is this. As a people, we hear the news and we are shocked sometimes at the things that we hear. If you and I are going to understand what is evil, there's a logical, common sense approach that is necessary, which is for us to see evil as evil, we have to know what is good. You see, beloved, if we call evil good, and good, evil, we are living in a state of spiritual confusion. Back here in Jamaica, I know sometimes in the inner city, the mentality is as follows. I won't be alive for too long. Therefore, it is my right to get all that I can, however I can, from wherever I can. And if someone gets in my way, then I need to put out this person in whatever way, shape, or form I can. In other words, beloved, when we don't have a standard of knowing what is evil, we fool ourselves into thinking that evil becomes my personal good. You see, the reality of evil is this. It is deeply rooted in selfishness. And when the ego takes over, what do we have happening? I allow my emotions to tell me what is good. I allow sometimes the people in my life who are sometimes just as much as in the dark as I am to tell me what is good. But your standard and mine, our standard as a people of faith, must be that we must know what is the good. And what is the good for us? For us who follow Jesus, it must be his word. God is a good God. And God gives us his word on how we can be good. Therefore, the good in life is not based on our emotions. I think this is good. No, it is based on, does God say it is good? The good in life is not based on what people tell me. Come, ignore them. Come and do this because this is a good thing. No. Does the word of God give approval for that good? So that for us to understand the nature of evil, we must know what is the good. And the good for us is based on what God, who is good, who made us in his good image and likeness, says we are to embrace. Therefore, the beginning of confronting evil starts with what is good, as revealed by God, as opposed to what is evil, as is evident in our world. Understanding, then, that knowledge of good versus evil must be the foundation, we are then led into striving for the good. But we have a problem. You and I find it hard to be good. A dear friend of mine wrote me the other day and she says, be good. And I instantly wrote back, it hard. <laughs> Why? Because inside each of us is the propensity to choose good and to choose evil. Adam and Eve, they were given all the good things they needed, but they still listened to the voice of evil. The people of Israel, even as God provided for them as they journeyed through the wilderness, and gave them all that they would ever need to survive, they still habitually turn to other gods and follow the practices of other nations. Fast forward, the disciples, although they were blessed to have Jesus in their presence and heard his voice and heard all the good things he had to say, they were still caught up in who is going to sit on his right, who is going to sit on his left, who is the greatest among them. And when they were put to the test, they ran away. Paul one of the most intellectual apostles of Jesus Christ, although he wasn't called by the Lord, 
while the Lord was journeying on earth, but encountered the risen presence of Christ. When Paul encountered the Lord, before that encounter, he thought he was doing the good by persecuting those who follow Jesus. But it was only after encountering Christ Jesus that he learned what was good over what was evil. And so he decided to choose the good as God revealed and try to walk in his ways. But what did Paul tell us in his letters? Romans chapter 7. The good that I desire, I do not. The evil I try to avoid, I give in. In other words, even though Paul was the most intellectual of all the apostles who had knowledge, real knowledge of good versus evil, purified by the presence of Jesus, Paul struggled to be good. And we hear in that same reflection from Paul, God saying to him, my grace will be sufficient for you. In other words, beloved, you and I can't be good on our own strength. Yes, we can encourage each other. Yes, we can look within and say, yes, I am strong. But at the end of the day, we are all weak, frail people. And so in order for us to not only know the good, but also walk the good, we have to open ourselves to the grace that Jesus gives. Look what happens in today's gospel. Jesus is in the synagogue, and he meets a man possessed with an unclean spirit. Beloved, make no mistake. Just because someone is in church, or someone is online virtually, does not mean the evil spirit is not prodding that person. It doesn't mean that people, even when they gather in the name of the Lord, whether in the physical presence of the church or online, is not being oppressed by the evil that is around but what is the beauty of it? It's in the encounter with Christ that the possessed man is liberated. It's in the presence of Jesus that evil has to flee. And that's why I urge you all the time, make sure our priority, the relationship we have with our God, is uppermost in our minds. Because only He can heal our conscience, drive the evil from us, and give us the graces we need. If we understand then that it's in the presence of the Lord that we are not only delivered but empowered to be good, what then is required? Does that mean that I become a saint all of a sudden? No. Evil, as it was in the beginning, present, is very much present in the here and now, and it's going to be present in the future. Spiritual warfare is a lifelong journey. And yes, we are fully aware of psychology and psychosis and all the psychotherapy that's needed for people with imbalances in the brain and in the ways they think and live and speak and act. Yes, we are fully aware. But whether an intervention with a counselor for deep psychological maladies or whether an intervention of prayer where spiritual warfare is real, we all need that grace to survive. And how then do we keep on surviving and confronting evil? The evil we find in ourselves, the evil we encounter in others, the structural evil that surrounds us. Three things, beloved. We have to give ourselves generously to prayer, to scripture reading, and to the sacraments. It's in the prayer we cry out, Lord, I am struggling. Help me. And as he does with the man in today's gospel reading, he comes to each of us. It's in the reading of scripture that Jesus reveals his good word that leads us out of evil. When you pray, say, deliver us from evil. But because he knows we are weak, and sometimes even though we know the good and want to do the good, like Paul, we fall into the evil, he gives us his sacraments, his sacraments to strengthen us. His sacraments to nurture us. His sacraments to impart mercy to each of us. Continue, beloved, to be open to our God. For if we truly cry out to him and say, help me, Lord, our God will come. And even if we are so encased in evil and we say to God, leave me alone, I enjoy gossiping and bearing false witness. I enjoy the sad state of my life. Leave me alone. God will come. And God will say, 
I love you too much to leave you like that. I will keep knocking on the door of your heart. One day, if you choose to let me in, you will know my love, my mercy, and my power. To our great and good God, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. As a people called to walk in the goodness of God, let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, Son or Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Everyone who waits for the Lord will always find joy. Let us cry out to him as we say, Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Faithful witness, firstborn of the dead, you washed away our sins in your blood. Make us always remember your wonderful works, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. You called us to be heralds of your good news. Make us strong and faithful messengers of your kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. King of peace, send your spirit on the leaders of this world. Turn their eyes towards the poor and suffering and alleviate all crime and violence, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Protect and defend those who are discriminated against because of race, color, class, language, or religion, that they may be accorded the rights and dignity which are theirs. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. May all who died in your love share in your happiness with Mary, our mother, and all your holy ones. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. And now, beloved, in the silence of our hearts, let us offer our own personal petitions. For the intentions in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the great deliverer Free us from sin and evil. Pour your grace and mercy upon us so that we will all choose to be sources of your good news to all we encounter. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in your divinity, who humble yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, O loving Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant us hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while we entrust ourselves more fully to your Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, and without end, we your people now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Hosanna! You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As Jesus ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, 
Jesus took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the entire human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division, be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kenneth, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints, among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. 
And virtual Jesus hugs. Christ. And lots more virtual hugs. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, sins of the world, grant us, grant us peace. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Beloved, I now invite you to do your act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. O oh Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. Beloved, let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Thank you, beloved. Thank you for once again coming together as God's family to thank him and praise him and to celebrate the gift of his word, the gift of his body and blood for you, spiritual communion. But we continue to call on the name of the Lord, the Lord who is life, the Lord who is love, the Lord who is goodness. As we discern the good, let us truly pray for the grace to live the good. And when we do fail and fall, as we will, turn to him. For God is rich in mercy and full of compassion. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing, saying amen at the end of each invocation. Beloved, may God the Father bless you. Amen. amen. May God the Son heal you. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit sanctify you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful week, beloved. Thank, Thank you, Father. Father. See you, you next you. week. Yes.
Ari Sessional Hymn is number 417, number 417, Walk in the Light, verses 1, 2, and 6. The Spirit lives to set us free. Shine for all. 